All right, hey everybody, let me uh, get the camera angle thing going here a little bit better and see how this is working. All right, here we go. Hey, happy Friday afternoon. Welcome to episode four of Poolside Sales Chat. Uh, this week, I'm actually by my pool. You can see the birdcage in the background. Um, in Florida, that's actually called a birdcage, even though there's no birds in here, it's called a birdcage. Uh, that's just the lingo that uh, somebody came up with a long time ago. I don't know who came up with it, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I didn't invent it. So if you tuned in to episode three of Poolside Sales Chat uh, last week, I was in San Francisco and I was not exactly by a pool. Uh, I was standing on my sister-in-law's balcony in San Francisco and uh, while the landscape view that was behind me was just off the charts spectacular because she lives up just below um, Twin Peaks in San Francisco, which is the highest peak in the city of San Francisco. And, and she lives in a house that's just on the street below that. And so the view from there is just breathtaking. It's like postcard view. Um, it was not a pool. It was uh, nonetheless a gorgeous landscape. So this week I'm back in Florida. Uh, I'm at home uh, with, the, with the pool side behind me and here for episode four of Pool Side Sales Chat. Um, so we are uploading these uh, Periscopes up on our YouTube channel. So uh, for anybody who's tuning in and doesn't know me, I'm Bernie Borges uh, with Social Business Engine. And uh, we've got these Periscopes going up on our YouTube channel. At, uh, so it's uh, youtube.com slash social business engine or something like that. Anyway, you can find it that way. Um, so if you're watching live and you've got a friend that uh, needs to catch this episode, just point him to our YouTube channel. So on episode four of Poolside Sales Chat, here's what I want to talk about. Um, I'm, still, I'm still talking about things that inspire me from a blog post that was published early in April uh, titled Social Selling is Back to Basics. And in that blog post, I curated 17 tips from 17 experts, uh, social selling tips. And a lot of them were very basics, okay? Just like the title of that episode is Social Selling is Back to Basics. Um, so this week's episode, what I'm going to cover this week, was inspired by John Ferrara. John is the CEO of Nimble. And what his tip... He's got a lot to offer on social selling, by the way. But his tip is that, um, hey, Kerry 411 thanks for joining. Um, his tip is that social selling is kind of like going back to uh, the old ways of selling in a small village where everybody knew everybody. You know, kind of like the Leave it to Beaver days and the, uh, the Andy Griffith show, if you ever watched any reruns from the Andy Griffith show where, you know, everybody knew everybody and, you know, and you were who you were um, personally and professionally and everybody knew you. And so a big thing that's been talked about for quite a long time is how do you separate the, the blurred lines between personal and professional uh, as a professional selling uh, person, you know, in, uh, in you know, professional sales using social media. How do you separate those lines? Those lines are blurred between professional and, uh, and, and, and business. So when you think about it, you know, there's three major social networking sites. Now, look, I know there's a lot more than that. I'm going to remark on that. But if you look at LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, it's kind of the big three, right? From a professional selling point of view, okay? Well, on LinkedIn, you invite people to connect with you. You actually are inviting them to uh, be part of your professional network, right? So the protocol on LinkedIn is that it is strictly professional. So, but would you post on LinkedIn something that you would also post on Facebook. Now, the interesting thing about Facebook is that when you connect with someone on Facebook, you're actually adding them as a friend, right? So you become someone's friend on Facebook. So it's much more common to post more personal things on Facebook. So for example, last week I was at a wedding in beautiful Sonoma County, California, and I posted lots of pictures of my beautiful niece's wedding. And uh, it was, you know, fantastic. So, you know, if you go to my Facebook, my Facebook page, that is my personal profile, you'd see all kinds of really um, cool and fun pictures. Hey, Dave in Tampa. And um, so that's, you know, that's normal. That's kind of expected. That's what you do on Facebook. But you wouldn't, I wouldn't post those pictures 
of the wedding over on LinkedIn, right? So there's kind of a clear delineation there. You know, like LinkedIn is professional networking. What you post on, on LinkedIn is strictly business professional. Facebook, it's not strictly personal, by the way. There's a lot of business stuff going on on Facebook. I'm a member of several groups that are, you know, within my industry. That's professional. And in those groups, I don't post pictures of, of, of a wedding that I attend, right? Or if I go out to dinner with my, my wife and, you know, we take a picture, I might, I'm going to post it on Facebook if I choose to. And I've done that, you know, on my Facebook page, but I'm not going to do that in a group that I belong to on Facebook, right? But now, what about Twitter? How do you use Twitter? You know, now there's a real decision, right? Am I going to use Twitter for business or am I going to use Twitter just for fun? Right now, what I've seen some people do is they create a separate Twitter account for like a hobby of theirs, golf, whatever, whatever it may be. Right. And then they have one for themselves. That, that's a personal choice. Nothing wrong with that. Right. But for me, I just choose to be me. Right. And then I'm just going to tweet about whatever I want to tweet about. A lot of it has to do with stuff that's going on in my industry. But if I want to tweet about, you know, a Tampa Bay Lightning game that I'm going to or if I'm just out and about and I take a picture, I want to tweet it, you know, I'm, I'm not going to hesitate to do that, right? Because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So I have no hesitation to post stuff within those three networks that are going to paint that picture, right? But here's a question for you. What about Snapchat? Now, you may or may not be on Snapchat, right? Um, I've been on Snapchat for four years, but I really only, cons only consider myself on Snapchat for about four to six weeks. And the reason is because I've only recently started posting to my story for about the last four to six weeks. And, you know, I'll have to be honest here. At first, it was strictly personal. I was strictly having fun with it. And now I've just noticed that it's gone from 100% personal to maybe 80% personal. And the way that that 20% crept in was that Hey, the last two weeks I've been at conferences, right? I was at Social Media Marketing World two weeks ago in San Diego, or last week rather. And then um, this week I was at Social Media Strategy Summit in Chicago. So I'm snapping, you know, what I'm doing at this conference. The funny thing is that I'm also snapping things that are fun because I'm hanging out with people, we're engaging with each other, and we're doing things that are actually fun and engaging with each other at a real human-to-human -human way, right? So... The idea basically is that it's really difficult to kind of draw a line between personal and professional. Uh, I can think of a, a, a buddy of mine uh, within the industry, within my professional circles, who, uh, you know, he's smart, he's talented. I really respect him tremendously for uh, what he does in his line of work, right? But when he talks, he uses F-bombs. Now, it's not crazy. It's not like out of control, but he, do, he uses them. And uh, while that may not be me, it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be him, right? I mean, I respect him for who he is both professionally and just as a person, and I'm not going to judge him for that. And you know what? I don't think his clients do either. I mean, he basically says, look, this is who I am, and, you know, my clients get that. Hey, Zachy528, I don't know if I just pronounced that right, um, but cool handle. Um, so, hey, Carrie, you joined a little late. I, I did that in the introduction here. So I'm Bernie Borges, and I'm with Social Business Engine. Check out socialbusinessengine.com to kind of get the full picture here. I'm talking about a blog post that we published at the beginning of April called Social Selling is Back to Basics. And specifically, I'm talking about the topic of how do you balance personal and professional? Now, I'm speaking to the sales professional here. Okay, if you're a brain surgeon, if you're a lawyer, you know, if you, certain industries or certain professions where... The people just want to keep their professional activity on social media separate from their, their, I'm sorry, their personal separate from their professional. And I get that. I'm speaking to the sales professional. This is poolside sales chat. So I'm speaking to the sales professional who struggles with how do I, you know, keep my personal life separate from my, my professional life. And really, it is my opinion that if you're in sales, especially if you're in B2B professional sales, that... You shouldn't sweat that. You should just be who you are. And now look, if, if you're drinking vodka shots in a barber's chair, you know, at a bar on a weekend or even a weeknight for that matter, and you're posting that online on Facebook or whatever, look, you have every right to do that. You know, it is your personal life, right? Just know that, you know, you're taking some risk if you're posting that kind of content. So, you know, there's also some good judgment involved here, right? 
So just you know, think about what you're posting from the standpoint of your brand, your reputation, and the fact that uh, you know, there are people out there that can see that content even if they're not connected with you. Now let me ask you this question. If you're in sales, which is who this poolside sales chat is intended for, right? Do you invite your clients or customers to be your friend on Facebook? Huh? That's a tough question for some people, right? Well, while I'm not here to answer that question for everybody, I will tell you that in my opinion, if you have a good relationship with a client or customer, I mean a really good relationship where you just connected person to person, then if they don't invite you, which they might, then go for it. Invite them to be your friend on Facebook. You might learn something about them that you didn't know before, and likewise, they might learn something about you that they didn't know before, and you might just you know, strengthen that, that bond between the, the, the two of you. But again, you know, use some you know, good judgment, some discretion on what you would choose to share online. Because again, the lines really are blurred between personal and professional. So it is my advice for sales professionals to not sweat it too much, and really just you know, be yourself connect with people at that human-to-human, person-to-person level so that you can strengthen relationships as much as you possibly can. As long as they're genuine and authentic, don't ever try to fake it. People are way too smart. They'll see right through that. I've said it before and I will say it again because it's that important. So anyway, that's going to do it for episode four of Poolside Sales Chat. For more on this topic, uh, go to socialbusinessengine.com where we talk about this stuff. And Carrie, so the networking groups that I belong to on Facebook are Social Media Masterminds, and there's one group uh, that's a closed group with the IBM Futurist. And then on LinkedIn, boy, I belong to several groups on LinkedIn. Look me up on LinkedIn, Bernie Borges, and you can see the, uh, the groups that I belong to there. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Again, uh, for more on this, go to socialbusinessengine.com. This is Bernie Borges saying happy Friday, and we'll see you next Friday for more Poolside Sales Chat. See ya.